The purpose of this video is to help with quiz five and just provide a little bit of direction. There are two questions here. And uh, the first one's about the Kelly family, which is actually a true story. So um, uh, the Kelly twins uh, famously uh, were both NASA astronauts. And one of them, Mark Kelly, is now running for Senate in Arizona. Uh, so at any rate, let's imagine these two, if you were parents that were trying, had visions of your children becoming astronauts and you wanted to build a Ferris wheel where they could get used to pulling G's and feeling weightless, uh, then it might look like this. All right, so for starters, you want to assume uh, mass and height for nature and human. Okay, determine appropriate diameter. Find linear speed, what would the apparent weight of the children be at the bottom? Because they wouldn't be weight the same way, they'd be heavier. And then report the angular speed of the in revolution. So I'm going to stop sharing and then we'll take a look at a diagram to help understand what's happening. So in the diagram, and this is supposed to be our Ferris wheel, the key idea for a vertical circle like this is that the direction of the centripetal acceleration is going to be different at the top than it is at the bottom. Now, I mean, as choosing a reasonable radius, anything from like five meters to 10 meters would work just fine. And the condition for being weightless up at the top is that the normal force is equal to zero. So that gravity, the downward force, is exactly enough to provide the downward centripetal force needed to keep moving in a circle. And of course, minus signs cancel out, a lot of cancellation. You should be able to get, this is a little confusing. This is in, supposed to be units, not M over S. But if you solve this uh, for V, you get a pretty typical equation that I've highlighted many times. Uh, and then down here, the actual weight, the normal force is going to be mg plus mv squared over r. So once you know what that is, then that should help. Now, uh, one question that you've been asked is what is the linear speed, but then also what's the angular speed in revolutions per minute? So breaking this down a little bit, uh, revolutions per minute um, is the same thing as one over minutes per revolution. So if you consider the distance from one revolution to be the circumference, two pi r, then you set the speed equal to two pi r over t, and then you can solve for t, which is the time for one revolution in seconds, and then convert that to minutes, and that's going to be minutes per revolution. So one over that helps you there. So that's some good help with uh, question one. And then I'm going to uh, share my screen again, and we'll take a look at the rest of the quiz. At this point, I think people have been trained enough to know that in here, this is where you type your answers. And then in question two, that's where you upload a file that shows your work. And you use a scanning app uh, to do that. Now, question three is a little bit involved, and a lot of words here. but. <clears throat> I can, um, you have a bunch of things to find out, but this really has to do with space travel in general. So I'm just gonna share a diagram with you that I, I made, which is not to scale, but I think it's gonna convey the idea. Okay, so <clears throat> this is supposed to be Earth. Welcome to Earth. And obviously the scales, the distances don't match up because the distance to the moon is much bigger. And in fact, we'll uh, put in a number here. Um, so the Earth radius, uh, well, first of all, the distance to the moon is about 245,000 miles. And you can look this up. You can get it in any units you want. Uh, now the radius of the Earth itself is about 4,000 miles. I know, really, really small, isn't it? And then, so what would happen is that we launch um, a space vehicle into a low Earth orbit and just make sure everything's working correctly. And then we're going to give it a burst of velocity to get it out to the moon. But I have to remember that uh, in the same way that if you were just going to take a watered up piece of paper and toss it into the recycling bin, you'd have to account for the Earth's gravity. And the same thing is true here for spaceflight. You have to account for the Earth's gravity. You can't just go in a straight line. So we start off in a low Earth orbit, which is going to be 
uh, somewhere between 200 to 400 miles. <clears throat> and that's what we call low Earth orbit. You can see R L E O is for low Earth orbit. And then we're going to transition to an elliptical transfer orbit. And from there, you can use Kepler's third law to figure out uh, the period of that and um, and its radius. So the characteristic of the moon, if we're going to compare this to the moon, then the period for the moon TV is equal to 27.3 days. And the radius of the moon is 245,000 miles. Now we need um, the period for our elliptical transfer orbit, which we can get from Kepler's third law, third law rather, if we know this, this, and the radius of the elliptical transfer orbit. And the radius for the elliptical transfer orbit is gonna be the average of R L E O, the low earth orbit, plus the radius of the moon's orbit divided by two. The average, since the ellipse at the closest point has a radius of R L E O, and the furthest point has the radius of the moon. And the um, period of the elliptical transfer orbit is two times the travel time. So the next step after this is uh, T A over T B squared is equal to um, R A over R B cubed. Uh, and so we are using the Bs are going to be the moon, and then the As are going to be the elliptical transfer orbit. So whatever you get here goes here. And then we're solving for this. And then when you get this answer, the travel time is half that. So I hope that helps. And as always, uh, feel free to email or text if you have questions.